Welcome everybody, I am Mr. Llama and today I am bringing you a Protoss vs Protoss on Shakira's Plateau. Down here in the bottom right we do have Axel spawning in the 5 o'clock position. He of course is a well-known caster in the StarCraft community. And over here in the 7 o'clock position we do have uh, the red Protoss, Ameris. So I don't really know anything about Ameris, but I do not know that Axel is a Masters player. So I would assume that Ameris is something of that sort. And Axel did personally send me this replay. So usually he has, uh, in the past, sent me good replays to cast. So I'm looking forward to this PvP right here. And we do have our standard pylon going down here for both players. And of course, um, actually we do, we are missing a probe there from our red player. So falling behind a little bit already, as you can see, a few seconds off that probe. Our red player must have been alt-tabbed out, doing something else really fast, or taking a bite of a sandwich, you never know. People get a little bit bored playing StarCraft during this uh, during the early stages here, so they got to find something to fill up while they uh, just build build their probes. So we do have Chrono Boost going down on both the Nexus there. Getting out those probes quickly, and it looks like we are going to get our first gateway drop for both players. So yes, it does appear that they are opening very standard here, and we should see the gases coming down uh, fairly soon here. Assuming that everything is standard play, and yes, there we go, Axel dropping his gas, and Amaris dropping that gas. And both players are going to be scouting on the 12, I believe, right after they throw down that gateway. They give a little high five there to each other. So they will both scout each other immediately, and that is going to be good for them, as they will not have to be wary of any proxy, uh, double proxy gate or anything like that. Sometimes you will see that. A um, little bit more difficult on this map, of course, as there is not the best position to throw that in. But you could probably throw something down right around here uh, if you were like the red pros or something, and then you could rush into this base or this base, depending where your opponent was. So both players, of course, getting that good scout information, though, and they will see that there is a Cybernex core going down. So there is not going to be any two gate, anything of that nature. In the meantime, Axel is doing the gas block trick while he does take his own gas. So actually, I'm not sure if everybody does know this, but if you put a harvester up against this assimilator, the opponent cannot build a gas right there, and so they are going to have to force that probe to move, as you did see the other Protoss went and attacked that probe, forcing it to move out of the way. So both players are getting double gas right now, so either they are going to be going into some sort of fast robotech or just getting out sentries for defense, we will see what they are getting there. So we do have Axel throwing down that early zealot and a stalker to follow up and both players are getting that stalker but it does look like our red player here Ameris is going to skip that initial zealot so that will give Axel a slight early game um, advantage if he does wish to push that he can march over to that base when he does get that stalker out as he does have right now and poke up and this player Ameris is going to have to deal with that a little bit. So Ameris does kill off that scout probe as Axel did kind of leave it there. And here we go, we do say Wallen actually coming in from our red player Ameris. He is going to be on to three gate. In the meantime, Axel has not thrown up any tech yet, but he does throw up that robotics facility just as I say that. So Axel does go all the way to this tower here, kills off the scouting probe and decides he is just going to retreat. He does not wish to see any more. In the meantime, we do have a Maris who does have this sentry up here. So he is definitely going to throw up some sort of tech behind this, I would imagine, as he is pumping out a lot of sentries. So I've actually seen a lot of this recently where sentries are just coming out left and right from these gateways really early on and Axel as well throwing down a, a, or getting a sentry, getting a couple sentries here. So I guess this is just to avoid four gate pressure or something like that as you will be able to hold it off enough with these sentries. Axel, Axel has thrown down that ro robotics facility and has actually transitioned into a three gate robo build here. So he'll probably pump out an observer really quick and he does and there is a robotics space. So going down at the six minute mark, Axel really wanted to get that robotics, or, or those colossus out, sorry. And just now we do see our, our Protoss player throwing down a robotics bay as well. So both players going to be doing a three gate robo. Slightly different form here as our red player Ameris does throw down those gates first. So he will be able to have a few more units out here to go do pressure and he is going to make an attack right now or at least press up into this 
into Axel's base. And Axel, very, very low on units, but he is going to have a warp in here. Yes, he's going to warp in a couple more zealots. So it's going to be a lot of sentry stalker, all range versus a lot of melee here. So we'll have to see what he does. Axel does have enough energy for three force fields though right now. So that will give enough time to warp in another round of units here if he does need. And Thermal Lance being rushed, Axel being extremely quick on pumping out those Colossus. So here we do see Amaris pushing really quickly, checks up for that Nexus and sees there is no Nexus. So he does not need to uh, pursue anything. He does not expand behind it though. So he does know that Axel is still on one base and is going to expect something else, uh, something different. We do see Amaris throw up this uh, proxy pylon right here. This is a very common proxy pylon placement. So if you are playing against the Protoss as any player, uh, always check up for here and right up in these ledges as Protoss players do like to throw their pylons up there. In the meantime, we do have our Protoss player here, Amaris, getting a warp prism as well as an immortal right behind that. And he does have these zealots looking... Uh, standing right here waiting so it looks like they will be loaded up in for a drop and yes that is what we are going to see so axel is unable to see this as his observer is too far out of the way but it looks like he is going to have this observer standing right over here which is going to catch this immortal it's like he knows it is there so axel running around with that observer i guess he was looking for his opponent's observer but knowing that that observer is not there he has to expect something else and here we go we do have a drop coming in right now and he's gonna drop in kill off a couple of workers i believe before axel does get over there axel does not have the stalkers to deal with this war prism right now and so our player Amaris is able to pick up two of his zealots. He is going to lose one, but he is able to kill off three workers right there. So he's just going to pick off and run back there, and Axel is going to have to leave these stalkers back here or just keep an eye on this back window. In the meantime, we did have an expansion going down for Amaris, but it looks like he has canceled that. So Amaris deciding he does not wish to expand and instead pushing up, running after this probe right here just to make sure that there is no proxy going down whatsoever. So he is going to be able to stop any sort of proxy pylon that Axel might have been wishing to place down there. And Axel does have a Colossus down now, and he is producing a second Colossus. In the meantime, we do have the Robotics Bay finishing up for our red player, Amaris. So his army is going to start pumping out a Colossus. Yes, immediately he does start adding in a Colossus to his army. And he does have three centuries full of energy right there. So that will be helpful in force fields, though Axel does have those Colossus, so he can stomp all over those force fields. In the meantime, we do see that Axel does have an expansion down, and does, yes, our red player has scouted out that that expansion is going up. He scouted it just as it went up with his observer. So, well done. Nice, nice uh, observer placement right there by Amaris, and way to scout that. In the meantime, Axel is throwing down his forge. Um, so he, he does have some extra gas as you can see he is at 450 gas so that is a lot of extra gas and he is going to be pumping that into upgrades I would assume as well as getting out another Colossus yes and possibly transitioning soon into some sort of high Templar tech or something of that nature as that is usually what you want to dump your extra gas into upgrades and Archons always great units in PvP Meantime, Amaris has taken an expansion, and he is getting his Colossus count out now. Start getting a second one right there, Chrono boosting it out, and he does have Thermal Lance on the way. So Amaris does know that there are some Colossus, as I'm sure he has seen them with his Observer. And so he knows he has to catch up, and he is pumping out those Colossus with that Chrono Boost. In the meantime, Axel is going to start Chrono Boosting out some upgrades, as he does want to get that uh, advantage in PvP here with the upgrades. And we do see another drop coming in from the back here. And it is going to take out a couple of probes here. And two more probes go down. Three more probes go down, I believe. Yes, but he does. it does cost him a, one more Zealot. So just toying in there with that Warp Prism. Going to get a couple of units out there. And Axel finally decides, you know what, I'm tired of that. I'm going to throw a cannon down in my main. So if you wish to drop there, you're going to have to deal with that cannon. Amaris' expansion has finished now. So both players on that two base. However, Axel is producing gas, or harvesting gas, sorry, from all four of his, or all four of his geysers, which unfortunately Amaris is only on two geysers. So this is definitely going to give Axel that advantage. And Axel also way ahead in work account. He has 44 pro probes to... Uh, 
Ameris is 35 probes, and right here we are going to see Axel go up to look at that, look to take a third base, and I believe he sees, yes, he does see that probe right there. In the meantime, there was that drop coming in, but he decided, Ameris decided to back out as soon as he did see that cannon because that is not going to be effective for him anymore. So there is going to be a warp in right here, and there were a few, few units that, that were going to warp in for Ameris, but they were canceled immediately when Axel... Uh, Axel's whole army showed up to deal with them. So Ameris commenting weird style, uh, very uncertain. I guess that is a very early third expansion, or just an unseen third expansion that most Protoss players do not take. But it looks like Ameris does have a probe up here, and he does have the minerals, and yes, he is going to drop that Nexus down as well. So it looks like he is <laughs> must lose to Gosu Blink a lot. So he is going to try and keep up with the economy of Axel. He has decided, you know what, I need to stick with this. And we do see Protoss armor, though, going down for Axel. So he is going to get that, that upgrade. And we do not have any upgrades yet. And I don't even believe we have a forge for our pr red Protoss player, Ameris. So if he doesn't get a forge out pretty soon, Axel is going to take a commanding lead with these upgrades. And we may see a, a push here coming with this 1-1. One, one uh, ground armor that could uh, give him that timing uh, advantage that possibly he knows about or something as he will have the upgrade advantage so that could be a good timing push right there and we do see Axel starting in immediately with those gases at his third so we just have Ameris getting these uh, second gases right here and Axel already getting onto six gas and there we go we do see a forge going down for our Protoss player Amer, so it looks like he has seen that Axel does ha have upgrades and he needs to start getting with the picture. In the meantime, Axel has thrown down a Twilight Council, that's the name of it, sorry, and a Templar Archives. And while he does not have Storm going down yet, he does have Charge being researched. In the meantime, we do have a drop coming in from this Warp Prism right here. So he is going to warp in a couple of Zelts and he's going to try and get away with this Warp Prism. And yes, he is going to be to be able to get away. So nice little harass right there. He is able to pick off five more workers. In the meantime, Axel has no probes here at a second base. So what did he do? It looks like Axel pulled all of his probes and has grouped them up with his army. And I do not believe he sees this yet. And just now he's running all of his units around. But he has not done anything to change this yet. So it looks like both players are going to be starting, starting their upgrades here. Axel is starting his level 2, while Maris is just starting his level 1. And Axel's income has just taken a huge hit. He's not even at 1,000 because all of his probes are running around with his army. There is another drop going on here. And it looks like Maris is able to pick off two more workers. Let's see if Axel does notice that his probes are still with his army and it does not look like he has taken any notice of this so here we go we do see that Ameris is going to push it out he does have seven Colossus to Axel's five so Ameris was just chrono boosting those out he did get double uh, Robo Bay there and he or double Robox facilities and he is going to make a little push here but it looks like he is actually going to back up I'm not quite sure why as he did not see anything different but he's just going to send one Zealot in, in front here just to check, see what Axel has. And he should be able to see that Axel does have High Templar and Archon now. So that is something that he is going to have to worry about as our player here, Ameris, does not have any Templar tech, nor does he have charge for his, his Zealots. So he's just finishing up this one, one or this plus one upgrade for his attack right now. Axel will be finishing this plus two. So he is going to maintain a 1-1 one, one upgrade advantage over his opponent. And right now we do see Ameris is looking to make some sort of aggression. He does have the supply lead 184 over 158. Axel just now getting all of his pros back to mining. So he has been down on Incom a lot and that is going to hurt him. And here we go, we just see the push coming in. Axel does have the better concave, but there are way more Colossus here for Ameris and all of the Zealots do charge in, but these Colossus are just going to tear them apart so quickly. There are a few Zealots over here that are picking off at these Colossus, but here we go. The Stuckers are going to push forward, and here we go. We have some Micro coming back from Ameris, and it looks like Ameris is going to have to back out as all of his Colossus were grouped up there. Well, Axel did have the better Concave with all of his Colossus able to hit all of his Ameris', Ameris units, while Ameris could only hit those Zealots in the front. So Axel able to defend that successfully, what looked like to be a very diff difficult fight for him, 
but Amara still does have the huge Colossus count, and all he needs now is to really get an army under this. In the meantime, Amaris has thrown up a Stargate, and he is getting Void Rays added to this mix right now. Axel, in the meantime, is going to go ahead and get Blink, so it looks like he wants to get Blink there, so he can Blink right on top of those Colossus, possibly, and hit them uh, while... After getting rid of all these units, chase them down, anything like that, because he knows Amaris does not have much of a ground army at all. Axel also going to go ahead and expand right now, and just a huge gas dump as Axel does produce seven high Templar. And there we go, he is making six Archons. So Axel deciding that he had a lot of gas, he's up around 1300 gas I believe. And now he has a big Archon force that he can leave in the front there to go ahead and tank all of these Colossus shots. Well, his Colossus go ahead and deal extra damage. And Amaris, just his unit composition, is not looking the best right now. He does have those 12 Colossus, but only 8 Zealots, 4 Stalkers, and 1 Void Ray there out on the field. So it is a purely Colossus army. And while people do sit there and say Colossus OP, you do need something to stick with those Colossus. Otherwise, you are just going to get mowed down by an army like this. So we are going to have to see if his composition will improve. He is still holding that supply advantage. And he does have the Harvester count uh, up as well. Axel starting his plus three weapon upgrades though as well. So you have to remember that probably played a huge factor in the last battle as Thermal... Thermal... Uh, as our, I just forgot his name, as Amaris, our red Protoss, was only on one attack and he had zero armor at the time of that battle. So here we go, we do see Axel going to go ahead and start pushing forward with his stalkers. Is he just going to be looking to do some damage with them or not? And he does push in right here. He is going to pick up this stalker, but he does reveal his blink in the process. So now Amaris knows that he does have blink. In the meantime, Amaris is going to pick up his level 2 ground armor as well as charge for his zealots. So that is something. And he is picking up level 2 weapons as well. So that is something that he was missing in that last battle. And Axel has yet to throw down a second forge, I believe. No, he does not have a second forge out. So Amaris with double forge there is going to be able to catch up to Axel in upgrades. And if Axel doesn't take advantage of this pretty soon, he is going to be 1-3, one, 1 armor, 3 attack versus 2-2 two, two pretty soon. Amaris up to, <laughs> this is ridiculous, up to 15 Colossus. So that is a lot of DPS, but still no ground army to go with it. 8 zealots. Four Void Rays and three Stalkers, so he is sticking to just hitting uh, a lot of DPS there, but nothing to tank. That could be costly. We'll have to see how that does pan out. I don't believe I have ever seen 15 Colossus in a battle before, so I am very interested to see how that does work. In the meantime, we do have Axel over here who has maxed out, so both of our players are maxed out. Axel going to go ahead and take this fifth base now, so he's always staying one base ahead of Amaris, it seems. Always economically a good thing to do. He has mined out of his main, except for that little patch there, 25 minerals still missing. And he does have a lot of minerals left as natural though, because he did pull all of those probes for a good couple minutes there before he did push them back in. And we do see a, see a mothership coming out from our red protest player, Amaris. Let's see where it's being built. I just like to watch it being produced. There it is. So the fleet beacon is right there, and there is the new upgrade, by the way, everybody. Research Anion Pulse Crystals, and that will increase the Phoenix weapon range by two. So right now we do have the mothership out, and it is moving up here. So is he going to do some sort of recall? How much energy is recall? 100 energy. So he might go for some sort of recall, but it looks like he is just bringing this back over his units right now. So Axel also producing a mothership. We are going to have a max 200-200 army battle with mothership. This is extremely exciting. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this with the double mothership, that's for sure, uh, with max, ar max protest armies. So this is just a rarity as of now. But hopefully I, we, this starts to become the standard in PvP as we've seen Axel show that he can hold off earlier pressure in other games while still getting into this macro state. In the meantime, we do have a quick drop coming in for, here from our protest player Amaris, but it does not look like he is able to kill off much before those units are picked off. He does have this warp prism still back here though, and Amaris does have those 3-3 upgrades coming down right now. So right now it is 
3-1 for Axel versus 2-2. Two, two. But Axel about to get his second level armor upgrade. And here we go, we do have the attack coming in. Not many zealots or anything like that. But both players do have that mothership. Amaris is loaded on those Colossus. And here we see Axel. And yes, he does have an obver observer speed too, I believe. As that observer was moving extremely quickly. So let's see if we can find... I forget where that's upgraded at. Robotics Bay, yes. So, Observer Speed, Warp Prism Speed, everything has been upgraded. And these 3-3 three, three upgrades are about to finish for our pl Protoss player, Amer. So he is going to have the 3-3 three, three versus the 3-2 of Axel. That is going to give him a slight advantage, which just might be enough in this battle right here. But we do see Axel going to go ahead and push out and make a move. This Observer is caught. So he is going to lose that. And Axel, and they're just dancing now. They're both just dancing. And here we go. We do see Amaris going to push him. But Axel does have the concave on him. If he does push him, this is extremely difficult for both players. As they know that the concave is going to be huge in this battle right now. And so Axel pushes in. And Amaris does not have a great concave. Both players have that mothership. Axel's Colossus are just tearing apart at the other Colossus. In the meantime, a Vortex does go down for... I believe that was Amaris's Vortex. So he is going to throw his units into that. And I... I did not see how many units were caught in that, but in the meantime, Axel is coming around, and he was able to catch a few units, but does not look like enough, and Axel is going to go ahead and push forward, he does have these stalkers here, which are kind of tanking the damage of these clusters, in the meantime, Axel's clusters are just pulling out behind, and Axel drops, <laughs> Axel drops a void, uh, a vortex now, so he is going to back up, and just warp in another round of units here, and we'll have to see exactly what Axel does. He is going to start pushing forward now as these units do come out here and he does get that attack. He does have the blink on these stalkers so maybe he will blink. Yes he does. He's able to pick off a couple more Colossus right now and it looks like Amaris is going to be in a little bit of trouble as he has lost all of his Colossus I believe except for this one on field. He does have three so he just produced two more back there and huge warp in coming for Amaris. But these Colossus here are left alone and Amaris does blink on top with his stalkers and Axel is going to start going, tearing away at them with his Colossus. Axel does have the huge Colossus lead now. In the meantime, Proto Shields level 1. Another mothership coming out for Amaris. But first, he's going to have to deal with this attack. And Amaris says, should have just gone blink and easied you. So he thinks that his blink strategy, which he did not pull out early on in the game, could have just torn Axel apart. But... That is not how this game played out, and instead Axel was able to pull it out, having that great concave back there. Just all of those units able to attack all of those Colossus that were just grouped together. And Amaris was unable to deal enough damage because he was unable to hit all of the units, and he just did not have enough ground army. So it does look like Axel is able to pull out this game. 5 base versus 4 base, Protoss, maxed armies with motherships. What an exciting game. So GG, well won, Mr. Llama out.